What's up everybody? Just got the car back from Josh's shop and we now have the Super Trick Optic Armor Lexan front and rear windows. And while it was there, they fixed this trim. They replaced all the trim on the glass. It looks super clean. This is Optic Armor's, I think, 8th inch or 3 16th. It's one of the two, but this is the thinnest blackout window they make. So it's Lexan. Kind of see it flex. And this one is their thickest, I think, quarter inch. So it's a lot sturdier. Should hold up to the 200 plus mile an hour winds we're gonna do. If not, we may have to add some of those braces right in the middle to keep it from bouncing and coming into the car. So now that those are on, I wanna get the car back on the scales and figure out just how much weight we ended up saving. Okay, I have the scales in place. That side already has them on there. I'm gonna lower the jack down and let's see how much the old Rick machine weighs now. Car's coming down. Sometime. There it goes. Okay, there it is. 29.50 on the scales without me in it. That is freaking awesome. I also need to add on that car currently has an entirely full tank of E85 gas because I just filled it up on the way home and it has a full 10 pound nitrous bottle. So the heaviest it can get without me in it is 29.50. And I think that's why we're so heavy on this back corner. I don't know, it's kind of interesting that such a weight difference right there, but with me in it, it should balance out pretty nicely. So speaking of nitrous, if you remember in our last video, when we tried to flow the 300 shot of nitrous, it made peak power at 5,600 RPM, whereas naturally aspirated and on a 200 shot, it made its peak power about 7,100 RPM, I think. Well, I'll have to go back in the video and look, but the problem on the 300 shot is I was only running a single 10 pound bottle, so it made 785 wheel at like 5,600 RPM. And the reason is, is a single 10 pound bottle physically doesn't have the internal volume to flow and to push the pressure of gas to flow a 300 shot of nitrous. So we are now gonna add a second bottle. The one, my bottle right now is mounted, you can kind of see it on this bar of my roll cage. Like that. And I'm gonna mount a second bottle on the opposing bar and they'll just Y together and then go into this dash six feed line. So with two 10 pound bottles as my capacity should easily flow the full 300 and the car should in theory make about 850 wheel at that point. And whenever we were looking at the dynograph that made the 785, if you just kind of took your imaginary pencil and drew and extended the curve, you would get right at 850. So I'm gonna work on that next. I'm gonna get uncomfortable and crawl in between this roll cage and try to get that second bottle all mounted up. All right, so I got a new billet, roll bar mount, bottle, bottle bracket. I got the adapters to mount it to an inch and three quarter roll bar, whereas these are, I think, inch and five eighths. Got a second bottle nut, and then I just got a 12 inch dash six line and a four foot dash six line. And I'm just gonna mount the second bottle in parallel compared to this one, but on that side. And then I'm gonna move, I'm gonna run my 12 inch line on this bottle, the four foot line on that bottle. I'll put the Y connector on after them, and then coming out of the Y fitting, I'll put my pressure sensor, filter, and main feed line that runs down through the car, up into our massive nitrous solenoid. So I'm gonna get that knocked out, and I'll show y'all what it looks like when it's all done. Okay. I just finished breaking my back, crawling through this freaking nightmare of a car, but check this out. Two bottles. So both of these come out, they go into this little Y fitting, and then after the Y, I have the pressure sensor and filter. Both bottles will be open at the same time, so the pressure should completely equalize between them. I'm only gonna run the heater on this one bottle, because again, Pressure should equalize, right? As that heats up, it's gonna build pressure in this bottle, which is gonna equalize into that bottle. So in theory, that should work. I think the only time it wouldn't work 
is that it just, or I think, I think the only downside to running the one heater, obviously if it's super cold and both bottles are really low, it's just gonna take a little longer to heat everything up. But it is pretty freaking cool to look down the car and see two bottles hiding behind that optic armor. So with all that, Ricky is, he's pretty much done. He is pretty much 2K and Texas Mile ready. Uh, before we go really quick, I want to give a big shout out to Josh at Lunatic Garage. He's really supported the build and has helped me everywhere he can. Him and Jeremy Caps at Phoenix Calibrations. He's a tuner that works really well with Josh and they always work together. I can tune to the fault of getting the spark table and the VE table dialed in so that it makes really good power and drives very smooth. I, for the life of me, could not get this thing to idle smoothly um, at a stop or from coast down. Like if you just click it out of sixth gear and let it idle, it would surge, it would hold RPM and whatever. So I just shot Jeremy an email. He replied within a day and already had a revision file for me to try. I flashed that revision onto the car and immediately it was a completely different car. So big shout out to him. If you guys ever need any help or need to get a car tuned, definitely hit up Jeremy Caps at Phoenix Calibrations. So with all that said, this turd of a vehicle is ready to go on the trailer. And I will see you guys in Houston at Texas 2K.